45. Fluorine-18 is a radioactive isotope that decays by positron emission to form oxygen-18 with a half-life of 109.7 minutes. A positron is a particle with the mass of an electron and a single unit of positive charge. The equation is this, in which fluorine-18 will break down or yield into that oxygen-18 uh, plus that you know, quote unquote, positive electron, that's a positron. Now, physicians use a fluorine 18 to study the brain by injecting a quantity of fluoro substituted glucose into the blood of a patient. The glucose accumulates into the regions where the brain is active and needs nourishment. Fun times for all you physicians out there. Um, maybe you'll be doing this, right? So, uh, future, future physicians, right? We got this. But anyway, let's go to A. So letter A says, what is the rate constant for the decomposition of fluorine 18? All right, so let's start it off by, you know, letter A. We want to find out what that rate constant is. Now, the only piece of information that they really gave us was A, a balanced equation, right? And B, they gave us a half-life. The half-life was 109.7 minutes. Now, half-life is represented by T-half, right? There has to be a half in the, in the subscript region here. And a half-life just means that this is the amount of time to take your substance and break it into two, two equal pieces, so 50%. Now, a half-life for this one, for the fluorine 18, is 109.7 minutes. So a little shy of two hours, right? Two hours would be 120 minutes, so we're roughly around, I don't know, an hour and 40 minutes, somewhere around there. But anyway, we need to find out what the rate constant is, which is letter K, right? Lowercase k for rate constant from a half-life. Now, these are your integrated rate laws, right? Especially if you're talking about a half-life, you know that you're talking about kinetics. And chances are there's formulas uh, that you probably need to memorize, or maybe your, your teacher or professor may give them to you in your test or quiz, but there's formulas for zero order, first order, and second order reactions. So in order to answer this question, we first have to say, what type of reaction is this? Is this zero order, first, or second? Well, if the question was nice, they would tell you blatantly, you know, explicitly that, hey, fluorine 18 goes by first order kinetics. But if we, you know, read this again, there's no indication that any type of order is going on here, zero, first, or second. So the question is, how am I going to figure it out? Well, just know that if you're talking about decaying, right, or positron emission, or basically when you're talking about just a single element, if you're talking about single elements, so carbon, uh, fluorine, sodium, lithium, if you're talking about single elements breaking down, those will always break down via first order. So because I was able to spot out that, hey, we're just talking about a fluorine here, right? That's first order. All your single elements are going to be first order kinetics. So we bring up the two equations for your first order equations, uh, first order kinetics, right? And the one that has to deal with the half-life is this one right here. So we're going to bring this up, and we want to find out what the rate constant is from that half-life. Well, our formula is half-life equals 0.693 divided by k. And if we want to solve for the rate constant, what we can do is just inverse these units. So if you wanted to solve for k, which is what we want to do here, your rate constant would be 0.693 divided by the half-life. So let's go for it. I'm just going to get rid of this because now we know we're in first order. So we're going to say K equals the rate constant equals 0 0.693 divided by the half-life. And the half-life, what they say? 109.7. So here we go. K rate constant equals 0 0.693 divided by 109.7. 109.7, light FM. <laughs> every time, every time. It just pops into my mind. All right, let's press enter. And maybe I'll do 
scientific notation. Maybe I'll do four sig figs, so 6.317 times 10 to the, one, two, negative three. Now your first order units of K is always going to be, and maybe I'll put it up here, the units for first order, keep in mind that a K value is always going to be having different units if your first order, zero order, or second order. For a first order, your units is always going to be your time to the minus one. So look for that time in your half-life. They told us that the half-life was in minutes. So your rate constant would be 6.317 times 10 to the negative third minutes to the minus one. And we have our first answer. Color, color, color. Come, 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 Okay, stop. <laughs> it was a little bit of karaoke, but now we got to go back to B. Anyway, so letter B. It says, if the sample of glucose containing radioactive fluorine 18 is injected into the blood, what percent of the radioactivity will remain after 5.59 hours? All right, now we're talking about how much is actually going to be left once this decaying is starting. And they're talking about it in terms of a percentage. Now, let's just do a, a quick uh, idea of what a half-life is in terms of percentages. So when we're dealing with anything, right, if you take a pharmaceutical drug um, for maybe a headache or, you know, Advil, Tylenol, Motrin, whatever it is, right, um, or, you know, any pharmaceutical, there's always a half-life to every pharmaceutical. So um, some are very long, and if you have a long half-life as a pharmaceutical, that means that you're not going to be taking the drug very frequently. So that's why some drugs, you know, if, you know, if you get prescribed a pharmaceutical that says take, you know, once a day, or maybe there are drugs out there that says take, take once a week. If you have those types of pharmaceuticals, they have a really, really, really long half-life. That means that it takes a lot of time for that drug to get out of the body. But if your half-life is really, really short, um, you could be taking that pharmaceutical maybe three times a day because your body will be able to eliminate a large portion of the pharmaceutical drug in, an, in a day's time. So, um, so yeah, I mean, in your spare time, if you want to look up, you know, half-lives of, you know, pharmaceuticals, you can always do that just to kind of get a little context as to what, what this is. So in this case, when we're talking about percents, right, we're always starting off with what type of percent when, you know, when I'm sick and I need to take a leave, um, or Motrin, right? Um, if I'm taking a Motrin, what's the initial percentage that, you know, I take? Yeah, it's going to be a hundred percent. Always is going to be a hundred. And then after a certain amount of time, let's just say that for, you know, the Motrin, the time it takes to break down in half is roughly about, you know, an hour and 40 minutes, 109.7. So that's going to be one half life. And after that amount of time, the Motrin now is only 50% in the body. And then the same amount of time goes by. And this is where this is where a lot of misconception comes in. It is not going to go to 0%. The idea here is that whatever you're at now, it's now going to take 50% off of that. It's going to divide that in half. So if your new starting is 50% and you divide by two, now you only have 25% of that drug in your body. And then it happens again. Another half-life would be 25 divided by two. So then you would have 12.5% of your original, um, you know, still in the body that needs to be depleted. But that's the idea here. Now, in this case for B, we want to find out what percent will remain after 5.59 hours. That is going to be this equation right here. Now, there's always for this equation for first order kinetics, and I'll just get rid of this. There's always a initial amount and a final amount. The initial amount is always the one that has the zero. Zero means zero time. Didn't start with anything. So this is your initial amount, and you can use gram values. You can use mole values. Molarity, percents, fractions. If we're talking about percents, 
what is always going to be the initial amount that you start off with the percent? Yeah, you got it. 100%. And then we want to find out what percent is going to remain. That's this guy. This is going to be your final amount. And in this case, we're solving for it in terms of a percent. We're just going to say X. Now, there's two other variables, right? We have K, which is the rate constant. That's what we solved for before. So we can use that same information because it's the same balance equation. And this was in minutes to the minus 1. And the T, lowercase t, notice how this lowercase t does not have a half next to it. This is just the general time as to what the question's asking for. So when they say what percent of the radioactivity will remain after 5.59 hours, that's the general time that they want. They could have asked for two hours, two and a half hours, one hour. So that's just like the general time. But now hold the phone because before you start plugging things in, just make sure that the rate constant units and your time units are the same. Uh-uh, minutes versus hours. And me personally, I like to convert my time into my rate law, um, not my rate law, my rate constant units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just convert that hours into minutes. Hours into minutes, you just times by 60. So 5.59 times 60, you get 335.4 minutes. And now we're ready to rock and roll. Plug in time, ln of x equals negative, oh boy, hold on, plus ln of 100. The k value was 6.317 times 10 to the negative 3. The time is 335.4. And if you have the TI-84 or any version of TI-84, um, like I have, you can plug this all into Calc at once, but if you want to, um, if you want to just, you know, use your steps, that's fine with me too. I'm just going to plug it in all at once. Let's see if we get the same answer. Don't forget the negative because that's part of the equation. Negative 6.317 times 10 to the negative third times 335.4 plus ln of 100, close parentheses, and we get uh, ln of x equals 2.486. Now we still want to get x by itself, so we do the inverse of the natural log, which is e to the. This will cancel, but if you do it to one side, you've got to do it to the other side. So e raised to that. And there we go. So x, which was the final amount, and if we started off with a percentage, we're going to end with a percentage. So this is 12.0%. So what percent uh, of the radioactivity will remain after five hours? There's still 12 left in you, right? 12% left. And that's going on for B. Okay. We got this, right? Let's do Ellen. Ellen of C. My goodness. Let's do letter C. So letter C says, how long does it take for a 99.99% of that fluorine 18 to decay? Which equation do you think we're going to use? This equation or this equation? Yeah, you got it. It's this one, right? Because how long? That's a general time. The general time is just the T value. And they gave us percentages again, right? How long does it take for this amount to decay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to pause the video. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll just kind of simplify this. I'm going to get rid of this because we don't need this anymore. I'm just going to put the answer for uh, A up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the answer for B because then I want to use uh, this equation. So just pause the video if you need to, um, to write stuff down. I'm just going to pull this over. This, this is all good. Okay. 
So we're going to leave that there. Okay. So now for letter C, we're still going to use this equation. And now we're solving for how long does it take? That's the time. So we're solving for T. We still can use this same rate constant because it's the same equation. And now the initial amount, since we're talking about percentages, is always going to be 100. But now what's going to be the final amount? Now here is the, the trick here, guys. Whenever you're talking about the final amount, that's how much is remaining. So whenever you're doing this formula, this amount that comes out is what is left, the stuff that did not decay. So if 99.99% of the fluorine has decayed, how much is remaining? Yeah, we're going to have to do 100 minus 99.99. And in this case, that's 0.01%. That's what's remaining. 99.99% you know, decayed, only 0.01% is remaining, and that is the number that you're going to put for A. So here we go. We're just going to use our, our math and just solve for X. So ln of 0 0.01 equals negative. Um, let's plug in that the 6.317 times 10 to the negative third, times t, plus ln of 100. So now I'm going to do the ln of 0 0.01. OK, so I get negative 4.605 equals negative 6.317 times 10 to the negative 3t. And now I'm going to do ln of 100. Okay, plus 4.6, maybe I'll do that in a different color, plus 4.605. So now let's keep going, minus 4.605, minus 4.605. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the actual values here. So I'm going to say it's this number minus this number. Okay, so maybe I'll move over here. So negative 9.21 equals negative 6.317 times 10 to the negative third, and that's times by t. Solve for t, divide on both sides, 6.317 times 10 to the negative third. We are almost there. So I'm going to take this total value and divide it by negative 6.317 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, and t equals, um, I guess we'll say 151458. Now units, 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 right? Always go back to that rate constant. The rate constant units was in minutes. So this has to be in minutes. So 1,450 minutes. They did not say specifically what unit they wanted it in. So if we did just want to see what's going on with hours, right, just know that there's 60 minutes in one hour, so we can always take this value and divide it by 60. And you're looking at roughly one day, 24 hours. So a full day, a little bit more than a day, but a full day of basically having the majority of this fluorine get out of your system. And that's it. So that's all the answers. All right, A, B, and C, check, check, check. And we are good to go. Thank you for viewing the video. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. And I will talk to you soon, okay? I hope you're having a great day and keep studying hard. Always keep learning. And I'll catch you in the next lesson. Okay, bye-bye.